Animal Gear Written by Drew Scott Planned by Jordan Buckingham and Sakai Dozier Narrated by Sakai Dozier Sequence 4 We now look upon Bella Fortaleza in the midday sun as we pan down to a view of Diego's longhorn stakes from across the street. The afternoon rush has arrived, as per usual, with many a patron entering and exiting the establishment. We follow one of them, who sports a long-tailed high-collar coat, fedora, and round-framed reading glasses, as they enter and take a seat at one of the corner booths. Saul is quick to notice their entry, arriving within moments to take their order. Hello. What can I get you started with? The patron pauses, and then responds. Just water for now, thanks. With this simple ask, the patron picks up a menu, and begins to mull over it with their gloved hands. Saul is quick in his service, heading to the bar to pick up a pitcher of water. The patron, appearing indecisive about what to eat, makes a dismissive flicking gesture in Saul's direction. A moment later, as Saul is picking up the water pitcher, the water inside it shifts unexpectedly, causing him to spill it all over the counter of the bar. Cursing under his breath, Saul quickly wipes up the mess before making his way to the sink, pitcher in hand. The patron, now watching Saul with some interest, makes a similar gesture to the one they had made before, as the waiter begins the refilling process. He had only filled the pitcher to a quarter of its capacity before the sink faucet stopped producing water. Saul frowns as he turns the lever of the sink a bit to allow more water to flow, but to no avail. Cursing under his breath in frustration once more, Saul wrenches at the levers of the faucet, turning them up to maximum flow. There is a brief moment of silence before the faucet fixture of the sink begins to rumble. This time, Saul's curse is audible as he moves to turn the flow back down, but is too late as the fixture blasts off in an explosion of water, sending Saul to his rump on the floor as he narrowly dodges getting hit in the head with the fixture. Hearing the commotion, Diego pokes his head out of the kitchen. What the hell is... He doesn't finish the sentence, his eyes answering his question for him, as he leaps through the service window. Quetzal, having also heard the commotion, rushes out of the kitchen as well. It is Quetzal who reaches the sink first, reaching underneath and turning off the pressure valve. Unfortunately, the floors, ceiling, walls, and cupboards of the bar are all sopping wet already. Saul, who had been scrambling to find something, anything, to plug the sink, is now frantically scrubbing at the floors in an effort to dry them. What are you doing? Diego admonished. Grab a mop and bucket. Quetzal, get every towel we got out here now. Diego turns to the patrons, still in their seats. All right, guys. We're closing for the day. Ain't legal to serve food with a mess like this. Finish what you got, and we'll be here tomorrow. Although there were complaints from various patrons about food they had not yet received or paid for, they understood the gravity of the situation, mostly, and left at Diego's behest. The restaurant now empty, with the waitstaff working vigorously to dry up as much of the shop as they can, Diego does an assessment of the damages so far. All right. No permanent damage, I think. Getzel, wipe down the counters and floor with disinfectant. It's under the sink. As Quetzal goes about the business of cleaning the floors, Diego turns to Saul. Now for you. What the hell happened? Saul is tired and very anxious. I was just refilling the water pitcher. But when I picked it up, it... It overflowed somehow? 
then I, when I turned on the water, it just exploded. I, I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't get it. Did anyone suspicious come in today? Nobody. A few regulars, some new folks, some guy in a high-collar coat. I didn't see his face all that well. What did he order? Just water. What? Is that the crime now? After today, it could be. He didn't order any food. He didn't get the chance. He left with all the others. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. Quetzal looks up from wiping down the counters with disinfectant. What do you think happened? Diego crosses his arms, thoughtfully. I have an idea, but I don't know for sure. Keep an eye out for that guy, though. Both of you. I'll tell the rest of the waitstaff tomorrow. This could all just be nothing. Unfortunately, it was indeed not nothing, as Diego suspected. In the coming days, more fluid-based accidents would occur. Toilets would overflow. Additional faucets around the restaurant would burst, along with their associated plumbing implements. Spilling errors would become more and more common amongst the waitstaff, as water seemed to leap out of their cups and pitchers. Although Quetzal and Diego were capable of doing much of the work to handle some of the recurring issues, for the more egregious happenings, Diego was forced to call in a plumber and general repairman. The expenses were starting to catch up to them as the restaurant started being closed more and more often due to health inspections and repairs. As this happened, less and less patrons came to the restaurant, cutting into profits. With pay cuts looming, and more and more harsh happenings about, many wait staff left for greener pastures. In three weeks' time, they were down to four wait staff in Victor, Saul, Agatha, and Vivian. Having given them the day off as the restaurant was closed for inspection once again, we find Quetzal and Diego at the dockside market in the afternoon, amidst the hustle and bustle of seaside commerce. In spite of the cheery seaside sun that beamed down upon them, Quetzal wore an expression of depression alongside his compatriot's anxious, wheeling gaze. Having come to the docks with the intention of acquiring groceries, they came there with just their backpacks on them, hands free so as to carry the bags that they would be putting their various edible wares into. I checked every inch of the plumbing, including the water main valve. These issues are not normal. We're being screwed with, Diego replied, still trying to figure out who or why. We just run a cafe. Why would anyone do this? We do more than that, kid. You've sold some inventions. One of them probably pissed someone off. Are they after me? Well, I could hide in our apartment. Nah. They'd follow you home easily. Or they already know where we live. You're staying right here, in my sight. You're not going anywhere. Hiding would probably be the best option. Uh-uh. We want them to make a move. They'll get impatient and come after us. That's when I'll get them. So, I'm... a bait? Yeah. Your bait. I won't make it easy for him. I promise. I am very concerned. Amidst the din of the dogs, a voice calls out to them. Hey, Quetzal! They both tense up and swing around, ready to defend. However, their anxiety is unwarranted. It's Bartol and Rook. They are standing near some large crates stamped with various symbols of tradable goods like food and appliances. Bartol beckons them over. Quetzal! Toby boy! Glad I found you! 
How are you? How is the cafe? How are the inventions? Um, we're very well, thank you. I mean, you know, I'm always making new stuff. What brings you here? Bartol crosses his arms and nods his head. The presidential rally, of course. Still a few days to go, but lots of preparation involved. Oh, yes. Bartol looks at Ketzel with a bit of interest. You didn't answer about the cafe. Oh, oh um, the cafe's in trouble. So I heard. Mysterious accidents involving water. Nearly everything you could think of, as I could understand it. Diego crosses his arms while scanning the area. We're being intimidated. Still figuring out by who. And why. I might have an inkling as to who that might be. Bartol looks pointedly at Quetzal. You never told me how that meeting with the merchants went. Uh, that's right! I struck a deal for my artificial aether aloe. But there was an aether aloe merchant there. He was intimidating, to be honest. He wanted, or rather he demanded, I make a deal with him. Alone. Uh, it was uncomfortable. I said no. I made a deal with all three merchants instead of just the one. And now you're being harassed. Well, yes, but I got the deal, so it worked out. Except you weren't in control of the situation. That third player was out of your reach. He accepted your deal, but it didn't end at the negotiating table. You mean all the accidents have been... It's pretty obvious, kid. At least now that he's pointed it out. Ugh, god damn it. We had a deal! Why would he do this? How is he doing this? Ketzel, let me tell you a story. As he says this, Barthold places an arm across both Ketzel's shoulders in a carousing manner and gestures with his other hand. Diego, noticing that Bartol is leading Quetzal away to somewhere, steps towards them. Hey, hold on a second. We're just going to talk. Just a moment. With this, Bartol makes a gesture, which Rook responds to, stepping between him and Diego. Diego glares at Rook, as Rook looks at him with a challenging gaze and a smile. As this is going on behind them, Bartol turns back to Quetzal. So, last week, my expedition to the South Pole nearly fell through. I coordinated the supplies, manpower, and other aspects of the venture. Some of my partners were getting too jittery, and wanted to downscale their long-term ventures, such as this expedition. They said traveling to the South Pole is too dangerous. They weren't interested in such a risky adventure. Makes sense to me. Except that would be bad for my interests. So, before we got here, I assembled a dossier on my partner's more shady activities. The good, the bad, and especially the ugly. You blackmailed your own partners? Oh, God, no. Nothing so inelegant. There's a reason someone does something they aren't proud of. And if they knew that I knew, they'd clam up and shut down the expedition altogether. Details aside, I said the right things at the right times and got them worried about... Other matters. As he says this, Bartol takes on a slightly more dramatic air. We could miss out on a great opportunity. Oh, no. Other expectations are being planned. Oh, no. And just like that, they were on board. Without a plan of attack, 
my deal would have failed. Ketzel is silent for a, a moment. Never enter a situation that you're not prepared to control, Ketzel. Ketzel swallows. With this, Bartol takes a more jolly air, releasing Ketzel from his carousing grasp. He now addresses both Ketzel and Diego. You need to learn their weaknesses. Then, strike hard and fast. Never leave anything to chance. Diego snorts at this. We've got no idea who's doing this. Good luck finding out that kind of intel. Barthel gives Diego a meaningful wink. I'm sure you already have what you need, Bobby. Diego growls a bit. Don't call me Dobby. He then turns to Ketzel. Let's get our groceries. We're done here. Ketzel waves to Bartol as he and Diego walk away. Bartol waves back, but more discreetly. He leans close to Rook and whispers something. Rook walks off into the crowd. For the next half an hour, Ketzel and Diego go and buy produce from the various merchants selling directly on the docks. Both of them have tall brown bags of groceries as they are walking their way back home. The docks have become very crowded, as Diego and Ketzel have to push their way through shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder crowds. Ketzel, stay close. We'll be safe when we get to- Ah! Diego slips suddenly both feet flying out from underneath him as he slams to the ground. His bags of food fly out of his hands, spewing vegetables all around him. He finds himself laying in a puddle of water. Diego is stunned on the ground for only a few seconds. With great effort, he manages to sit up and grabs the back of his head where he hit the ground. Ugh! What the hell was that? Did you see what that was? Diego looks around. Ketzel is nowhere to be seen. Ketzel? Ketzel? He continues to scan the crowd. But there is no Ketzel in sight. Just more and more bodies. Ketzel! He manages to stand, albeit painfully, and looks frantically about him. Of course they separated you from Ketzel. You shouldn't have gotten into this big crowd. So stupid! I couldn't have been down for long. He's got to be around here somewhere. Diego continues to scan the area, looking for any sign of his friend. And to his left, although he doesn't see anyone he recognizes, he does see the bag of food that Ketzel had overturned on the ground in an alleyway. Dago takes off his backpack and rummages through it for the heat gear. He'd brought it out for just such an occasion. Affixing the gear to his shoulders as he makes his way through the crowd, Diego's eyes become set. I'm coming for you, kid. End scene.